Welcome everybody to this Crusader Kings 3 Let's Play. I've had a real big think about this. I haven't played Crusader Kings 1 or 2. I know, I don't, I don't know how I managed without it. Having a few hundred hours in France and in India and in Africa, I thought why not tackle the border gore of Eastern Europe in 867. Sure, here we are. I am getting up there with CK hours, and I'm thinking it's time for a challenge. So, for this playthrough, for the early to mid game, I want to make the Kingdom of Poland. And I want to do it as one of the insignificant chiefs. So we are not going to play as the Piast dynasty. We are going to play as the humble chief of Tarnow. And I actually believe that it's pronounced Tarnuf. I'm a bit intimidated. This is going to be a very hard playthrough. Because first he's so small and he's got these much bigger neighbors to him. We're going to have to be on our A game, so we are playing on um, the Iron Man mode. We are playing on normal, which at the moment is the highest difficulty there is. And we are not creating our own ruler. Not for any prejudicial reason, more because I like the idea of changing history. So let's jump in. Tarnuf. What's first on the agenda for us? Well, we have this handy tab here. We can designate a guardian for our daughter, not endorsed by our Zaritza. First things first though, I think we need to look at our court. And we have a pretty crap court. This court is not good. What we are going to have to do is scan our court for bachelorettes and marry them off to get knights and better counsellors. The counsellors that I want are the chancellor, a new steward, um, the marshal and spa master. Sure, if I can get them, if I can't, it's totally okay. First of all though, I'm going to make Mazaritsa my court physician because it will make her like me and she's more likely to give me more money and more levies. Here we can marry her off and we will marry her off for a new steward. Matrilineal marriage for stewardship. 13 steward, Milobrat. Okay, Milobrat. Okay, who else do we have in our court? Alicia. Okay, Alicia, let's marry you off for... I think a new marshal will do us nicely. Let's see what we can get. Oh, 21 marshal. He's a bit old, but she's young, so they will definitely have children. Ah, his prowess isn't that good, which is a shame. It's always a bonus if you can get good prowess as well. So we've married Alicia off. Um, I'm not even going to try and butcher the magnificent Polish language with my terrible ignorant pronunciation, but let's marry her off. This time, I think we do need a new chancellor. 38, she's 23. Hmm, yeah. And I think that's it. We don't have any more women. Okay, so at this early stage, let's see what I want to do. Well... Obviously, I want to increase my domain, and if we go to the duchy tassels, my county is part of Lesser Poland. That is a big county, but I fully believe I can take it. I wouldn't be playing this if I didn't. Now, to take Lesser Poland, I need four counties. So, ideally, I want to make alliances here and here. None here, because this is land I want to um, go into. So let's see what we can get by marrying our daughter off for an alliance. We can marry just the type of alliance I wanted, all the way here. So it's not in the land I'm trying to... It's not in this land that I'm trying to expand into. So Rogovold or the Chieftain. 
I think we should marry the chieftain. Get that dynasty going. Okay, let's book it. Now, little brother. Let's marry little brother for an alliance. I would normally choose a trait marriage. I'm not powerful enough. That's a luxury I can't really afford. But another good marriage here. Outside of the region I want to expand into. And relatively the same age. One year apart. What else do we have here? We have Karinja, which is up here. More men. But more men versus um, more room to expand without peeing them off. I think I'm going to take this marriage. Let's see what your air situation is like. Because if I marry Jotia and I kill the sun off, yeah, she would be the heir. But she would be waiting a long time. Seven years older. So when he is 16, she will be 21. I'm showing my math skills or lack thereof. Okay, yeah, let's take this marriage. Two very good marriages to start with. And if we look at our duchy title, they are well outside of our expansion zone, which is good. Let's unpause. Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. Yep. Amazing. Okay, now playing as a non-Christian faction allows us to declare war pretty much straight away, which we are going to want to take advantage of. I just want to swap out all my ministers first. Yep. Yep. Get out of here. And did I, I think I've got a new Marshal, Alexander, yes. So we're going to start this playthrough off with a conquest. And hopefully we'll end off too. We're just going to allow these soldiers to fight. Okay, so I think we're going to go for San Domeres. That sounded too Spanish. He has 600 men. Four champions, I have five champions. More men than I have, I only have 300, but I have allies, which is gonna help. So let's declare war for Conquer County, and you don't have any allies. I will call my allies in to help. I'll do that right now. So my big ally is gonna come in, call to war, yes please. And I don't think we need to involve our other ally. It's costing prestige, so it's probably not a good idea. Now, more men, so I am going to have to run. This is also 867, so I'm expecting a lot of border gore. Because 867 Eastern Europe is not fun. The name of this playthrough, I might call it border gore. So I'm, I'm going to have to kind of dodge these raiding armies. He's coming down, which is good. <laughs> Just gonna have to dodge, dodge, dodge. Oh, oh my word. Okay. <laughs> We're almost there. We're almost making it. Oh, he just disappeared. Okay. Oh, no, there he is. This war seems to be going our way. Such an early war to start with. But we need it because Tarnuf is so small. It's tiny. It's way too tiny. So that'll be seven months. He's going to go for my capital. It may be worth actually just finishing his stack off. Ten months siege. No, we'll make it. We'll make it. Okay, so the border gore is already happening. Our neighbors are fighting each other. Nine months siege. Four months. We'll make it. That's another thing. Oh, pregnant. But that's another thing. With the border gore, I really need the allies. The allies will really, really help. But imagine the small little village of Tarno forming Poland. And it was a village. I actually did some homework and the county of Tarnoff was never really significant. The most significant to happen in Tarnoff was in the 13th century, a traveling miracle worker healed a villager from the village. 
in Tarnuf, and um, the first, ooh, what do we have here? A new claimant of all the buffoonery I've ever seen in his names, inane efforts to improve my relations with my neighbours. My good-for-nothing Chancellor has officially acknowledged Chieftain Crux claim to the Chieftain of Tarnuf. No. No, no, no. What an idiot. That's why I changed Chancellors. But yeah, that, that was the most significant thing, and I just won the war, because I captured. So let me piece out this war. I get everything. Thank you, allies. I co wow, and I just effectively tripled the size of Tarnuf. There's about three Tarnuf's in there. Disband troops. Great. Yeah, so Tarnuf was a small little village, and... The first time it's mentioned is in the 13th century, and this is because there was a, a miracle worker called Kinga, Kinga of Poland, who was a woman who reportedly uh, worked miracles all around Poland, and the church at the time was investigating the claims, and one of the claims came from a, a peasant lady in Tarnoff, so that's about the most interesting thing about Tarnoff. Oh, amazing. Okay, great. Wow, okay, so what do we have here? Do we have any economic buildings? No, but we need to increase control. So we'll do that. Now, we kind of just went into it, but my strategy is going to be that I'm going to remain in the Slovenskan religion, and then when I've got enough power, boom, I'm going to go Catholic. I think that's the best way to do it. So we've got 1.4 ducats going in. Oh, I didn't um, give my children guardians. That's terrible. Okay, for my son, who is our most learned character? Alicia Courtier. And for my daughter, I'll give her to my Zaritsa, and that will give me plus 15. Awesome. Uh, don't want to declare any more wars. She's not married. Okay. I think we will use her marriage on a prowess. So matrilineal marriage, prowess, Eustachy. Yeah, Eustachy 26, we'll take that. And he's a giant. So hopefully as many, many giant children. We'll wait till Eustachy comes in. Excellent. So, wow, we we effectively, we went from backwater to not looking too bad. Cradled by death. Oh, no. Okay. When the midwife finally exits the birth chamber with a softly crying bundle in her arms, relief washes over me. Then I see the look on her face. I'm sorry, my lord. Lady Eugenie. Words fail her, but the tone of her voice says it all. One life has been extinguished, but a new one has just begun. I must stay strong for my daughter. Okay. I mean, I don't want to be an asshole, but this means I can remarry and get another great alliance. <laughs> There's no way to sound good saying that when your wife has just died. But yeah, we'll take it. I didn't know her that well anyway, so let's marry for an alliance power. I think I took all the best marriages for my children. What if we marry for traits? Let's marry for traits, inheritable, traits and alliance power, nothing, okay, what about just relevance, we have intelligence, that's nice, let's get pitch, now what religion is she, same culture, let's marry her, yeah, that alliance marriage just wasn't worth it, I haven't chosen a lifestyle, I just jumped straight into that war without even choosing a lifestyle. I'm a martial man. I should have authority focus. That control boost per month looks sweet. Alrighty. Raiding, raiding, raiding. What? I just want to look at the composition of this army. 
Lathfootman. So I'm going to be making bowmen as soon as I can afford to. And I also need to build a bit tall and um, build some economic buildings. That's important. 480 soldiers are 460. But he's not coming for me. Like footmen and levies. But I've got better champions. How much? Because if I'm not mistaken, men at arms are cheaper. Oh, yeah, they cost prestige. Right. Okay, so I'm going to get bowmen and I'm also going to get some coney. No, that's too much. I'll also get light footmen. That's brilliant. I don't know why I didn't play a pagan faction sooner, actually. What decisions can I take? So I can adopt the feudal ways. I can uh, defenders of Rod. So win the loyalty of the tribes and unite in defense of Slavanska Pravda. Unite the Slavs, unite the West Slavs. Well, we're going to do more than that. We're going to um, form the Kingdom of Poland. So, I'm going to keep my prestige up. And the way to do that is to do things like call a hunt. So, I'm going to call a hunt. Hopefully, I hunt something great. Okay. I'm riding ahead of the group. As the plane suddenly grows still around me, the silence is almost palpable, and I struggle to hear even the noise of a horse's hooves. Just as I am about to turn back to find the others, I glimpse it ahead of me, blurry as in a dream, a heart as white as snow. Hmm, like something from a tale, I must have it. Or, it is just a heart. I will hunt others. A heart? Is that a, like a pseudonym for something else. So what does focused attention give me? It gives me plus two stewardship plus one prowess. Mm, I'm gonna follow it. Let's see what I get. I follow the white heart into the plains. An almost unnatural silence hangs heavy over us and the sudden sound of a voice startles me. My lord, there you are. I turn around to see the rest of my party having caught up to me. As I look back, the heart is gone. Okay, I thought that was going to lead to a bit more of a sinister place. Yes, okay, so I can gain the opinion of my guests, which I think I will I'll do that. Okay, so obviously the pious dynasty will end up uniting Poland and they were the rulers of the Polish people long before there was a Polish kingdom. Now this chieftain here, Simovit, he was the son of the legendary um, leader Pius, that's where the dynasty gets its name from, Pius the Wheelwright. And there's a legend about him that goes something along the lines of he was at a feast and some wanderers came in and asked for hospitality and he gave it to them. And then they prophesied he was going to be the father of a great dynasty and he'll lead all the Slavs. So this was the pious um, justification for ruling. Now, the interesting thing is... His great-grandson will be the first duke to convert to Christianity and get the blessing of the Holy Roman Emperor and the Pope and become the first king of Poland. So, yeah, I, I like to throw in a bit of history. That's why I love these games. They're very educational. The hunt, returning from the wild. The hunt is drawing to an end. We mount our horses to leave. The plains behind as the light fades from the sky. In spite of our difficulties along the way, the hunt went very well. I get 150 prestige for that, so it was worth it. Now, let's see how my men-at-arms are building up. Yeah, are they building? Should I marry her off? I think I should. I, I still need... Alliances. There are no good alliances to be had. So I'm gonna wait on that marriage. And the pious dynasty actually came from this um, province here, Niesno. A 
there was a very actually a very famous fortified um region. One of the only fortified regions. I'm being raided? Oh no, I don't have enough men. Actually I do. They have four knights, five hundred levies, and eighty-three eighty-three light footmen. Okay. You're not gonna steal from me. I'm just gonna move my rally point. And I'm gonna raise all armies. We are gonna see about this. You're not gonna do this to me. This might be a horrible mistake. Okay, well, plus 13, plus 7. It's going well. It's going very well. See, we've got better men at arms. Great. And we get that money, which is good. Can't disband with enemies in the area. Should we chase them down? I wonder. Should we raid? Should we go raiding? Probably should. You know, I should, should take advantage. So yeah, I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to call a raiding army. Let them build up to a hundred. Okay, now the buildings. How much are the buildings? They're in the 80 to 90 range. So I'm probably going to build economic buildings and just get my economy up. Let me have my men at arms on screen here. Now what are good targets? No loot there. No loot there. Oh, she's pregnant again. 15 loot here. How much men do they have? Way more men than I can afford to mess with. Hmm. Trying to scout for about here. 15 loot? Oh, heavens no. <laughs> no, no, no. This could be a good target. 15 loot. He has 668 of Yeah, okay. Let's raise all my raiders. Mind you, my raiders aren't necessarily my whole army. I know that. Exciting. Let's go on our first raid. I love the smell of iron in the morning. Oh no, they do have more men than us. Uh, they have bowmen, they have light footmen, and they have champions. Whoops! I'm gonna get my ass kicked. Maybe. Yes. Yes, I am. Actually, no, no. Oh, I won't. I'm doing okay. Yeah. We just might get away with the money here. Sweet. And I get prestige for that. Love it. I think they're coming back for another battle. Diana comes of age. Okay. And she's an adequate bargainer. She can marry. I have another son. Seekek. Let's choose another name. After myself. Alexander. So have I actually finished looting this place? Yes, I have. Okay, so I'll go back. Okay, so I'll come back. No more loot to be had. Ah, interesting. I like that. Very interesting. Raid successful. I've never raided before. This was in education. This was very fun. Now, do I get that money just automatically? I can't disband. Okay, there. Now, let's finish off this um, army. We may as well. They're just sitting there. And to be honest, they'll probably be my next targets. Okay, that's going well. They are retreating. Good stuff. I want to disband now. I want to go... I want to go home. Okay, so let's check where we are. We need two more counties in order to proclaim. Okay, uh, let's disband. Build up our troops again. I'm going to buy an, a regiment of... Oh, yeah, I've reached my regiment limit. 
I didn't even check. I can proclaim um, limited tribe authority. Good. Nearly getting to a place where I can um, buy my first economic building. Let me see what my allies are doing. They're not fighting, and they're not fighting either. Can I declare war on this guy that I just destroyed his manpower? No. Ah, uh, he's the one I had a truce against. So, who I can declare war this way against um, the Count? I can declare war against the Count of Krakow. His name is Kluck. And uh, Krakow was actually founded by this guy. He was a semi-legendary ruler, though. Krak of Krakow. He has 500 men. I have more. Or well, we're on par. We actually have exactly the same, but he has greater allies, so this might be a bit of a battle. I think I should do it, because my, ally, my allies are bigger than your allies, kind of thing. I can unlock a new martial perk. Prepared conscription, army gold maintenance, minus 15%, nice. Mercenary hire. Mm. Probably one higher mini mercenaries. So at the moment I have two sons and let's look at the old succession rights. I would lose one and my youngest son would get the other county. This one, oh, incognito. Tonight I have stripped myself of every symbol signifying my rank and walk anonymously amongst my soldiers. It is a quiet evening. So when an argument breaks out, the word reaches me loud and clear. An infantryman is trying to convince his commander of an idea. Okay, so what do I do? Step in to protect the soldier um, by challenging the commander. There's a 68% chance he'll beat me. No. Make an example of them. I gain dread, but I also gain wounded, or sneak away and take credit. Part of me thinks I should roll the dice. It says I have a 31% chance of defeating the officer, so... Knowing the consequences of harming a commander, the soldier does nothing to defend himself from the incoming blows. As blood is drawn, I throw myself between them. Perhaps I should have known better. Oh no. I have gained Fort Seasoned Warrior for five years. Gives me more prowess. I've also gained a martial lifestyle. Okay. So this worked out in the end. And now I believe I can buy an economic building. Which I shall. Shall I buy markets? Yes, I shall buy markets. That is going to help me with my bottom line. And as soon as I increase control in this area, I'm going to earn 0.19 ducats, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's going to add up. Should I go to war for Krakow? Yeah, I think I should, because I think I have the allies. I'm going to do that, because I need to proclaim a duchy very quickly. Can I chain? Can I get Krakow? What would be the better target? Krakow? Does Krakow have any economic buildings? No. What about this place? No. But I feel like Krakow is a more significant target. So I'm gonna do that. Conquer Duchy. I cannot afford the cost of this war, so upon declaring, I will receive the following effects. Minus a hundred devotion. It might be worth taking a devotional decision. So let's go on pilgrimage. I don't have enough money. Oh boy. Okay, so I guess that's the drawback. Or should I take the economic hit? Because I just become known as a sinner and I lose a level of splendor. But I feel like in the long run, it will be okay. Or, what am I thinking? I can fabricate a claim. <laughs> Matt, you idiot. Okay, 
So I can go on pilgrimage now. Thank you, household savings. So let's go on pilgrimage. Where shall we go? The holy site at Conogard, the temples of Holmgard, to Balad. Is, is one better than the other? This one has an exclamation mark, so I feel like if I go to Balad, it will give me more devotional devotion, so I'll go there. It's time to depart. I kind of went into debt there, but I'll come out of it. In the meantime, there's this very scary raiding army. Okay. Among my fellow pilgrims, there's a woman who preaches a compassion and fellowship until she reaches the topic of heathens. One evening around the campfire, she loudly declares them to be abominable monsters in the eyes of the gods. Deviants and child murderers all. Most people avert their eyes when she looks at them. Do you not agree, O oh chieftain? They are not all bad, so I gain sympathy for heathens, which I get a tax benefit, opinion of other faiths. This might help me down the road where I want to become a Christian, or I have a disdain for heathens, but I gain trust, I gain stress, sorry. I think I'm going to choose this one because it will definitely help me down the road. When I want to convert. I think I'm allied to this raider. So it should. No I'm not. Hmm. Okay. That's going to be awkward. Okay. I've walked the path. I've gained 375 devotion. Is this? No it's piety. And I gained the trait pilgrim. That's wonderful. So I think now. I can actually declare war. Without waiting for this. I cannot declare war while in debt, of, of course. Clean forgot about that. <laughs> um, luckily, though, it looks like his manpower has taken a hit there. But he's got two very scary allies, but so do I. I need to make sure that my allies are not in wars, which it doesn't look like they are. Um, this guy, is he coming down to raid me? I think he is. I'm going to have to take that on the chin. Wait, wait, wait. Let me see the... What kind of soldiers does he have? He has 971 soldiers. Yeah, but what is that made up of? Light footmen and three champions. But I think I just may be able to win that. Because I have light footmen and bowmen. And five champions. Is this something I should do? I think it is. And I think I'm going to do it. So let's raise all armies. And let's do this. <laughs> this I think this is a dumb idea, to be honest. Um, no, it, it seems to be going all right. Yeah, it's working. I should have more faith in myself. Well done, men of Tar now. Well done. And let's disband our all units. Good. Chase them away. What's this tab here? We're in debt. I know we're in debt. Can solve that by going raiding. How much money is here? How much loot? No loot here. Any loot here? No loot. Any loot here? 15? How much men? Nope. Not touching that. Only 3 loot. There's not enough targets really. Not enough good targets. I'm just gonna ha have to wait until I declare war on this guy. Which I will soon, because I'm gonna get out of debt. What about here? Is this a good... Maybe I can loot the looter. No, you have nothing, but yeah, what do you have? Fifteen? Oh! Part of commanding an army means making sure my soldiers have plenty of food, drink, and camp gear for long campaigns. To this end, 
should come up with a plan. Arrange a network of merchants to help me. 57%. Stockpile. Ugh, I lose money. No. My soldiers can forge for their own supplies. Let me try the stewardship challenge here. After going through reams of financial ledgers, I was able to pick out a group of merchants scattered around the countryside, which I knew would be dependable. Great, this will be a reliable supply. No, I can't pick on that guy. There's no one small and rich enough to pick on. They all kind of... Ooh. Hold on. Hold on a ticky bit. Oh, no. They've been looted already. Wow, man. Border gore. <laughs> I have a son, and his name is Piscala. May you grow strong and wise, my son. And this person, I feel like I've been here before. 15 loot? But you have more men. But what are the quality of you? Yeah, you have vastly better quality. And you? You have only a bowman. And you have 15 loot. I can't kind of march through that land. What about here? And how many? 15. So I could go there, I think. Vlodomir. So let me raid them. Okay, so let's do a raid on Vlodomir. Oh no! Okay. <laughs> let's get them. <laughs> do they have loot? I can unlock a martial perk. Yes. I wonder if I pick up any money. If they came from anywhere. No, I don't. Oh, they came from Krakow. Okay. Okay. We're about to take Krakow. I'm very close. I'm going to march on Krakow with my... It won't let me disband, though. Far from home. A stranger is brought before me. She has been waiting outside my castle. Okay. Let's look at her. Yeah, no, I'll turn her away. So it won't let me disband my troops, which is irritating. Okay, so I obviously got to def... Ah, uh, good, they're gone. Let me disband troops. Let me declare wars. Conquer county. And I will conquer Krakow. Confirm. And it's 50 piety. Good, I'll do that. I don't think I'm fully ra yeah, I'm fully raised up, so I'll, I'll do that. I'll raise my armies. Oh, let me ask my friends to help me. So will you please come and fight a war with me? Um, he won't come right away, but he will come right away. Promise you don't have to do all of the fighting this time. Great. <laughs> For all the authority I supposedly wield as chieftain, I cannot be everywhere in my realm at once. There will always be those who forget to obey my orders, once my attention is turned elsewhere. So this is where my champion Sparkko could come in, who has been faithfully enforcing my decrees while touring the countryside. Yes, he will serve me. I gain a right hand man, so I gain extra control. He gains more opinion of me. My Marshal Alexander. I think he should handle it. I mean, he's got more martial experience. But the control growth, 1 per month, point 0.1 per month is good. Or I gain stress, but more prestige. I think I'll shore up relations with my Marshal. Excellent. Okay, so there's a bad guy there. And there's a bad guy here. Oh, no, I'm going to be caught off guard here, so I'm going to kind of run. My allies are coming in. Oh, no, run away, run away. <laughs> run away, run away. 
Oh no, I'm not gonna win this. I might win it. No, no, I won't. I won't win this. Um, see it done? No, no, no. I don't want that claim. I'm fighting that claim now. Oh no. Bad idea. Bad idea. So I'm going to have to... Here comes more allies. So that's good. But... <laughs> Oh, crappity crap. So yeah, I'm gonna have to join up with my main man over there and just try and avoid the doom stack. It's not really a doom stack, but for me it's a doom stack. I've got my ass handed to me in that one battle. But we have all met up now and now we can take the fight to them. Where are you going? You should not be going anywhere, my man. No, come with me. Where, <laughs> where are you guys going? Okay, come on, guys. Let's go. Sometimes the AR doesn't listen. Okay, so this siege will take nine months. The siege here will take seven. I think we'll win. My spa master has come to me with grave news. While we do not yet know who, someone is plotting to kill my steward. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll disrupt schemes. I haven't even used my spa master that much. Five months, eight months, so that should be fine. So yeah, I've, I've played kind of the cowardly diplomatic game so far, but considering I started out so small, I think that was the clever move. I haven't raided much. I did do a little raiding, but not as much. We'll probably see to that in the next episode. We'll do some more raiding, and I'll come at you with some more historical knowledge. This siege is six months as well. Oh, we are just a couple of days. We are three months away. We, we are going to close the siege in a matter of days. Okay, let's go kick the scars ass. Let's get them. Let's get them. Let's get them and close out this episode. This has been quite a fun episode. Lots of border gore, as promised. Heaps of fun. Yes, and they cannot stand. Will this be enough to win? Nearly. Not quite, but nearly. Okay, let's take the this capital here. Oh, okay. Just ticked up with war score now. Enforce demands. I get everything. Brew ha ha. Your glory is widely known. Yay. So in one episode, we've taken this small little county here and we have more than quadrupled its size. We are now a power in Southern Central Europe. Yeah, Southern Central, I would say. If you've enjoyed this episode, please like and don't forget to subscribe. It really helps the channel. And until the next episode, goodbye.